Everybody have smiles now. Smiles. Look at the camera. Camera is your audience. Your people are there. Live from Houston, Texas, in Texas, under <laughs> weather watch. Storms are coming. Ginger Cook, an acrylic painting at its finest. Ginger, how are you this evening? John, I am fabulous. Thank you very much. It's been a really fun day. We, we had a busy day today. Uh, we got a big storm coming into Houston. Maybe, 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 and for sure Louisiana. Sorry about you guys. And so we've been kind of scrambling around trying to get a bunch of stuff done in case we don't have power in the next week. You know, sometimes when the bad weather comes, we lose power. Just knock on wood that we don't lose any power. There should be some wood behind me. I'm going to knock on it. <laughs> knock, 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 okay? So Absolutely. anyway, I want to thank everybody for joining us on this fun Tuesday. We're going to be doing a seascape today, sort of a combination of landscape, seascape. And we're going to tell you some things to avoid when painting a landscape. I... Uh, you know, there's two kinds of people in this world. The people that move toward things. Anthony Robbins used to talk about it in his book, Neural Linguistic Programming. And he'd say, you're either somebody that moves towards something or you're someone that moves away from something. It's not a bad or a good thing. It's like whether you use Windows or a Mac. It's not, neither, it's not, it's not a judgment. It's a way that your mind operates, okay? So, um, you know, for some people, we could title this How the Best P Landscape Painting Experience Ever. And you'd be the move toward You're going, yeah, that's what I want, a landscape best experience. And then there's other people who said, you know, how to avoid mistakes in painting a landscape. And you're going, man, I don't want any mistakes. How do I avoid that? You know, it's a move away from thing kind of thing. So anyway, the genesis of this, we're going to tell you to have the best laid landscape ex painting experience ever. And we're going to show you how to avoid some things that might not ca what might cause it not to come out. So that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, we've got an interesting camera situation here now. We've got a palette cam now, real palette cam. Ooh, we, palette cam. Uh, which is cool. We, you guys asked for that. You want to see the palette all the time. And some there it people is. Said, I the palette. Can you center it back up? I gave you the two squares. Put it between the two white bars. Right there. Okay. There got you it? go. There you there go. go. So there's our palette cam. Okay. And then uh, we're going to do an 8x10 canvas. All right. And this, I'm just going to hold it up. Now, this is interesting. After I, uh, I showed you this painting last night, those of you who watched I our, have that up there on the still. You, you know, you saw that. All right. But actually, later to, this afternoon, I was looking and said, you know, this would be such a cool painting if there were some people in it. How would that work? And so this was actually what I came up with when I added the child and the dog. And I'm oh, not, I love it. We're not going to do the child and the dog tonight, but I'm going to show you where you can find the video to do that, which we'll have it up uh, later this weekend on our website. But that's... um. But tonight, it'll be all we can do. It'll take probably a good hour and a half to just get the basic landscape in. So let's get right to it. I want to thank everybody for, for joining us. If um, you're new to our channel, it's a good time to subscribe. That way you'll be aware of all the fun things we do. Try not to bump the palette cam. I think I stepped on something. What did I hit? Oh, the table. And everything went bumpy, bumpy. Okay, well, note to self, don't do that. So we've got an 8 x 10 canvas. The, the back has been sprayed with a little water, so I've got a drum-like quality. Uh, I've slightly sanded it. We do it this size, not because you couldn't make this painting bigger, but we do it this size because we can get it done in a reasonable amount of time. You're not going to waste a lot of paint doing it. And after you get the gist of this, then make it bigger, okay? So I'm going to grab a ruler here and put some glasses on, and we'll get out a T-square. And first thing we're going to do is just draw in our, um, we're going to break up our underpainting into two sections. And I need to uh, figure out where'd the picture go. Ah, good. All right, so we need to come down here about um, just shy of uh, two and three quarter inches, probably is about what we're looking at here. Two and three quarter inches. Um, about like. Make sure to turn you turn that over. On one side. I'm hooking it. I'm hooking it. Why I think you have it upside. Do you have it upside down? I don't have it upside down. It's just there it goes. It goes. Okay. All right. All right, so now I'm looking at two and three quarter inches like that. And I'm going to just draw a little line straight across there like that. These little T-squares make it really easy to do that, okay? And then we want to come down about, um, uh, what is that, about an inch and a, what is that, about an inch and a quarter below that. Inch and a quarter below that, okay? And we're going to draw another little line, and that's going to be probably as deep as our ocean gets, okay? So, now that we know that, good to know these things, 
We'll put the two square away, and I'll keep the ruler out in case you want other instruction. Now, the first thing we've got going here, you guys, is our gray sky. All right, sort of a blue-gray sky. So we're going to start with um, some white paint. And what I want to do is just, um, I'm going to take an extra palette. Uh, and somebody said, what kind of palette paper do you use? I use the Soho Urban Artist Palette Paper 9x12 for oil, acrylics, and alkaline. One of the things you've got to watch out for when you're buying a palette paper is that sometimes they sell it just for oil and alkalides, and it doesn't work for acrylics. It doesn't have that wax surface. It has to have a wax surface, okay? So I'm going to just turn that back like this because I want to mix some gray on it, all right? And um, let's see, let's take a palette knife. I need enough gray where it's going to be worth my time to grab some of this white. I'm going to move it over here like that. I'm going to start with white, okay? And a little tiny bit of phthalo blue, like that. That would be pretty right, th uh, bright. Phthalo blue is like kryptonite, okay? Can, can you still see me mixing? You can't yeah. hear, right, when I'm doing it, right? Yep. Phthalo blue is really a lot like kryptonite. It takes very little phthalo blue to make something. This is the color of the frosting I used to like to make when I was a kid and then eat it. Did you ever do that? What are you eating? Nothing. What you got there? Nothing. What are you hiding? Nothing. I'm not hiding anything. Boy, once I discovered how to make frosting, that was the deal, right? <laughs> just going, wow, you don't even have to have a cake or anything. You just eat this stuff. How great is that? All right, now we're going to take a little tiny bit of cad red medium, like less than 1%. We're going to gray this up here. Okay, see that? So, so a little bit more cad red medium. We're going to just start graying this color. Okay, scrape and flatten. Scrape and flatten. Do you see what I'm doing? Now, I still don't have the color, so I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of burnt umber, about the same amount, and add that. Scrape and flatten. Okay, that's good. Now, let's pull, I'm going to still scrape it and squish it out here. It's a little bluer than I want, so I'm going to try a little ultramarine blue with it. Add that. A little tiny bit of ultramarine blue, a little more cad red medium. I'll just gray this out until I get the gray I want. And this is, uh, you know, let's try that again. Let's keep squishing. Here's my, as I start really scraping it. And you see, now I'm getting the gray. There we go. See? It's, it's turning into a lovely, lovely gray, and it's pretty close to that. Now I'm going to take a little more white, and rather than scrape that off, I'll just put some white over here, and uh, like that. Let's just squish some white here, like that. I'm going to leave the cap off because it's just annoying. I have to put it back all the time. Here's rag. Okay, on fingers. All right, now I'm going to take some of that white, like that, and come over here with some of this and make a lighter gray, okay? So I've got two grays growing, going here. I've got the light gray and the dark gray, like that. Squishy, squishy. And, you know, this isn't like cookie dough or something. You don't have to mix it perfectly, but there you go. And I'm going to kind of mound it up. All right, that should be enough for this canvas. That should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to just um, start here. And I'll take a fairly large brush because we can... People say, what size brush do you use? Well, the bigger the brush the easier it is. This is a Bristol on number 12. You usually don't see me do that one this big. I'm going to kind of wet it, wipe it off on a towel, and then I'm going to start with the dark gray and a little bit more water on the tip. Now I'm just going to make sure I have the brush loaded. See that? I'm going to come down and across, down and across, down and across like this. I mean, this is a very, very fast way to do a canvas. And if I was doing anything 16 by 20 or larger, I'd be sure to have um, this size brush. Now we're going to go into the lighter gray and um, that we mixed. Come along here. And see, what I like about these Bristolons is they have a very, very tight edge to them. Ruby Satin Silvers do too, but these at, at hold, seem to hold their edge a bit longer. They're a little more expensive, but I have discovered that they really do hold their edge nicely. Now we don't have any clouds or anything in there. We just have some gray, all right? Now, let's see. Let me just find my painting real quick so I can refer to it. Let since me just you have a, one. Let me ask a quick question here. Amy, Amy was asking, even though a canvas is already gesso, does it still help when you spray the back of it? Well, what you're doing to spray the back of it is you're tightening it up. That's all you're doing. You're spraying the back of it with water to tighten up the canvas, Amy. But you're still at the raw canvas. It's still a raw canvas on the back. 
Yeah. This is just like shrinking your laundry. It tightens it up. Yep. And remember, that's what it's made out of, cotton duck, and just different thread counts. And so that's some canvas will have a tighter weave to it, a heavier thread count. I mean, you want to really entertain yourself sometime. Next time you're at a big art store, go look at their rolls of canvas, and you'll see swatches, and they'll maybe have 20 different kinds of canvas and how thick they are that you can stretch yourself. And there's, there's a big, it's like any fabric, there's big differences in the grades of canvas. And, you know, quite frankly, on this show, we're using the dollar canvas, okay? We're not using the most expensive canvas we can find, okay? So, yes, but th th anyway, that's why you do it. Okay, so now I want my water, and I w so I'm going to ink a little more ultramarine blue, and just with my brush, I'm going to add it to that darker gray mixture I had up there, like that. And I'm going to come down here like this, and uh, maybe I'll just put a little right here on my brush, because my brush is dirty, okay? And I'm going to say that this is my uh, going to be my water. Now look, I'm starting all the way off. I'm not moving my wrist. Do you guys see that I'm painting from my shoulder? I, I'm actually leaning. I'm kind of holding my my arm. This is kind of important. My arm is you know kind of almost against my side to brace it. And I'm holding my brush almost straightened down, and then I'm just le just taking my body. Just imagine this, and then moving it across. Do you see that? Just moving it across like that. So there you go. So you just, I get in the habit of doing that. Um, some people say, you know, that their hand, you know, for whatever reason, they may, your, your hand may not be as steady as you like, but you can use your body to brace it, which is a good trick. Okay, a little tiny bit of water on the tip. Tap it off on a cloth. All right, so there's our underpainting for the water, okay? Now what we've got here, the rest of this is... Um, is going to be, you know, there's a hill here. Do you see that? There's a hill that's starting almost here, like this. It's starting about here. It's running down this way. Okay, it's going about like that. And then we've got another hill. I think this is as low as our water is going. I'm going to bring the water down just a bit lower right here in the center. We can always cover it up with some grass. We'll just lower this. doesn't hurt. Acrylics you can just paint over, okay? So that's sort of our... Um, what we've got so far. Now I think I'm going to just take some some burnt umber and I'm going to come along like this. Now how far I am up here on the top of the canvas, I'm about, um, uh, let's see, let's turn the ruler the correct way. We're about um, two inches over from the left and about, um, oh, four inches up from the top is about what we want here. We're going to say this is just some burnt umber like that. Those are our colors. We use the same colors all the time. If you're not sure what colors we use, uh, we use them all the same ones all the time. This is just our underpainting. Yeah, Wendy just put the link out for our video, our art supply list. Oh, thanks, Wendy. I appreciate that. Wendy's one of our moderators who does it, faithfully comes on and helps us, and we really appreciate it. I want to thank Kim, who's also doing it, and if any of our other moderators have been showing up today, too, we really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, so now this space in here, we're going to take just a little bit of yellow oxide and ultramarine blue and um, like that. And we're going to cover this space with that color. And let's say a little more ultra, ultra, ultramarine blue, yellow oxide, kind of like that. Just put a little on my brush. And this is the... Um, so there's kind of my underpainting. Does that make sense? Uh, that's pretty much what I need for an underpainting on this. So that's, that's all that has to happen. And you see we've already sort of created the illusion of a hill, which is actually we're going to have another thing that comes around like this and um, kind of does this. It's going to curve like that. Does that make now you're sense? You're just scraping that right out of the I'm paint? I'm just scraping that right out of the paint, see? It almost looks and like white chalk. It does. And then this is going to be about this narrow, about like this. This is going to scrape down about like that, all right? And then this will be um, dark green right next to the hill. So that's, that's pretty much our, our hill thing. Now I'm going to wipe the brush off like this pretty well before I rinse it like this and then put it in the water. And I think that's the end of this big brush as far as what I need to do with it. Now we're going to, um, moving on, let's find a different brush and we're going to... We want to thank uh, Miss Angie for the donation. Oh gosh, that's so nice. We thank you very, very much for that. We really appreciate it. It helps us. And we want to thank our through. friend Andrew who uh, made someone made it possible for someone on our uh, 
website to have a um, your scholarship to our um, to our website. You know, so I just want to thank Andrew for that. You also have um, Sharon's postcards up there. Somewhere. Yeah, Sharon is Sharon's postcard here. I, I, I put it. I think I. Put I it see up. you did. Yeah. Okay. So we have another really good um, good uh, s a subscriber and friend and member of our. Uh, Oh, gingercooklive.gallery, and we got this beautiful card from her today. Isn't that pretty? Don't you love that? That, that could become a painting. Who knows? So I had this idea for painting, you guys. I thought, just use your imagination. I'm going to turn the bird going that way, okay? And a long canvas like this, and kind of have the head, and then the whole thing would be tail. Wouldn't that be pretty? Kind of a long, skinny canvas. Anyway, um, she wrote, uh, and I went, really, I'm waiting for this to dry. Hi, Ginger, John, and Sammy. Um, she sent us these cute little fingers. They're over there in your, in the little cup in where all your paints are. Oh, are they? I put them in a cup for you. You did, did you? You see them? Oh, maybe, maybe. No, I don't see them, John. But that's okay. I'm sure they're there. Well, anyway, she <laughs> sent us these neat things to go on your fingers for finger painting. We're going to try them out. She says uh, she just says she loves everything we do, and she sent us a check, and we thank her very much for that. She sent us this wonderful check to help someone else have some scholarships. She scholarship somebody for three months to our website, which was really cute. And um, she says she liked have, she likes um, you know interacting with um, other artists. And so anyway, we appreciate that very much, uh, Sharon. Thank you. All right. So now this is a, this palette knife should go in um, the water because we're not using that. And now at this point, people ask if I'm doing clouds. Okay. Now see the clouds on here. If I'm doing clouds. Can I do it with, is it better to dry the canvas? Yeah, it's better to dry the canvas and then do the next layer of clouds, okay? Even if you want to do wet on wet clouds, get at least one layer dry. Uh, we've get, gotten some uh, comments from viewers that said, you know, they have trouble, their paint lifts. Get a good layer of paint on your canvas and really dry it and then work off of that, okay? And try to avoid, this isn't watercolor, so you use water to clean your brush. Always wipe the water off your brush and try to stay out of the water. Use more paint. And, you know, those are our comments on that. Maybe it'll help you. So, if John, if you'd be so kind as to mute me, I'm going to start the hairdryer. Am I muted? Uh, you are, wait a minute, I got to, I didn't turn my light on. One second. He's turning his light on so, so he I can, can see. see. Over here. Yes, you are now muted. Thank you for asking. Hey, it's an important time to say thank you to Andrew. I see you came in the house, Andrew. I don't know if you heard. Uh, we really appreciate that donation. We got another person that we were able to scholarship in for a full year. And <clears throat> that's very, very important to us. We really, really appreciate that. Um, Sammy has his all, always an important message. If you haven't subscribed, Sammy, we've got to move you up a little bit, buddy. We need to resize you, Sammy. Sammy says to subscribe. If you're not a subscriber currently, please consider subscribing to our channel. We love to have you here. That way you'll be notified when we do live events and other activities we do. Thank you, Sammy. Unmute me, darling. I did, sweetie. Okay. Isn't that nice? Aren't we loving today? Yeah, we are. Listen, <laughs> John got a lot of really crummy comments last night. We had the most amazing video last night. Some of you may have got a chance to see it. Twelve... Um, insanely awesome tips. They were started out with 10. We gave you 12, probably closer to 14 tips <laughs> that every acrylic artist should know. And John, sometimes what John does, you guys may not understand it. Sometimes I'll be so focused on this that I really forget where I am. And he can tell. He knows me well enough where he can tell where I'm starting to lose it, you know. And then he might ask a question or prompt me because sometimes I'll just forget. He's not trying to be bossy or bully or any of that stuff. And people just wrote and said, you know, we're just sick of hearing from John. And he can just uh, shuffle off to Buffalo or, I don't know, some other things that were less polite than that. And I'm just saying that, you know, somebody ought to shuffle off to Buffalo. It should not, should not be John. Just saying. Okay, so um, did you ever use that expression? You ought to just shuffle off to Buffalo? Poor people in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, that's where my father was born, and uh, we, we use that expression occasionally. He goes, yep, that's true. Sh shuffle off to Buffalo. All right, yeah. so now I've got, I've got a little, I'm going to put some clouds here, okay? Here's my background, and I'll and I tell you what we don't want. I hate to say this. This is why these videos take, like, this would take me, you know, now that I've done one, this would take me maybe 40 minutes to paint this. But this takes a little longer because we have to explain what Ginger doesn't want, okay? And what Ginger doesn't want, Ginger doesn't get. So now none of you are going to do this because we're going to explain it, okay? You like that? So here's, here's your cloud. So 
Here's what we don't want. <laughs> the things we did in first and second grade. Well, it's, it's all right, but we don't want those. If you need to, go to Google Images, print out a bunch of pictures of clouds that inspire you, paint those. Hmm. You know, that's, that's okay to do. I don't mind. I'm not offended if you do some different clouds, but just don't do those, okay? So let's see. I'm going to take some, here's a smaller brush. It's a bright brush by Bristol on. It's a number hmm, eight, I think. All right. I'm going to got some mixing white, and I'm going to add a little tiny bit of that light gray like that. Not very much, see? And I'm going to come up here like this using just the side of the brush. And I want to see, let me put my painting back up where I can kind of see the clouds. I want to just say that here's my clouds, and they're just barely touching this, and I'm just doing kind of a fog banky cloud business here. Okay, like that. Maybe come down next to the ocean, like that. Just using the side of the brush, making tiny little circles. Now I'll just take some mixing white, come up here like that, and maybe suggest that there's some sort of clouds up here. The reason you want a transparent white, and someone's going to write and say, I don't have any, can I use something else? Well, obviously you're going to have to, but um, it's nice if you don't have to. Okay, so let's take a little of that light gray now and add some of that color underneath. Same thing here, let's add a little shadow with some of that light gray. And we're, we're just going to suggest clouds. Our, our goal isn't to do the, the most amazing clouds you've ever seen in your entire life. Um, though I'm not against it if you want to do a few of those. Now here's a little bit of just pure mixing white, and I'm going to put a little on the tip. I want to show you what you can do here, too. This is sort of a neat trick, is if you want a little bit of a wider edge like that in a couple places, you can just, uh, maybe where the light's coming through, you can get a little crazy. That's kind of fun. I mean, you can really have fun with clouds, and we could spend all afternoon just fooling around with clouds, but we've got some great cloud videos, so don't, don't sweat the small stuff, okay? Let's just come up here and do another layer, okay? Yeah, you might want to watch that one that we did in uh, Haiti with Andrew. Oh, yeah, that was a good the one. The last lesson that he did with clouds in it, those clouds were just phenomenal. Yeah, he really got it. We, I just sat next to him side by side, and we did clouds. Here's a little of our darker color now. If I want a little bit of more of a shadow under these clouds like this, here's some of that darker color. That's why you want to keep the darker grays, you know, kind of play around like that. So, all right, that's pretty, and I think we need to kind of balancing... I think I need something over here. So I'm pure mixing white now. Just on the, here we go, look at there, here, here we go, up and down. Try to get it up and down like that, and then just kind of use the side of the brush and blend it in, and here we go. Here's our fog bank down here on the water, like that. And listen, these, this line has to be level, okay? So, good to know. Okay, so now there's that. Now let's, let's finish the ocean, that was easy. Just going to put this picture up here where I can see it. Now, generally, what happens when you're doing an ocean is that if you look at a water, like 90% of the time, the uh, water is darker. Put a little ultramarine blue and a little bit of a burnt umber. The water is darker and then a tiny bit of titanium white. I know that sounds sort of counterproductive, but then now I'm going to tilt this and go right up here onto my horizon line. This level. This has to be level. If you have to use it, dry, dry it and draw, draw your line in again, do that. It's usually darker back here at the horizon. It's just one of those things. There's always this sort of dark line, okay? Now, that's one of the mistakes, you know, one of the things you want to do as a, as a seascape artist, too, is you want to make sure that you, um, um, you know, include that dark line on your ocean, okay? So now, and the water tends to get lighter and bluer as you come forward, but it, you, it may not depending on where you live in the world. For instance, if you turn this all turquoise and tropical, you'd change where the people were in the picture. This is more like a North Sea. So if you want to remember, this is ultramarine blue, and we're, now we're going to come in here like this and add some just shadows to the water like this, using just the, the uh, knife blade of the brush like that. And then we'll take some of this... Uh, lighter uh, color like that. So here's some light color right here and I'm going to just um, add some lighter streaks in here like that. So, Maybe so I'll you're switch telling me I need a second palette cam now, right? Y y yeah. <laughs> what, this one? Yeah, because you're up there now. I'm, I'm close up on your on your portion you were doing and all of a sudden your arm went up above the painting. I remember okay. you had a palette right. I'm just I'm just doing, yeah, you can kind of back out a little bit. What I'm doing is just grabbing some of this cloud c c cloud stuff and putting it in here. And then I might take a little phthalo blue now and a little bit of white and add it to that mixture up here like this, okay? A little bit of phthalo blue because I'm going to warm it up and a tiny bit of burnt umber in it to gray it, okay? 
So I'm just kind of warming up the water as we get a little closer. All right, so as we get closer into shore, I might warm up the water just a bit. It's probably too warm, a little more ultramarine blue with it. And um, now if I want any more detail than that, I will have to, um, I'll have to use a smaller brush, which I don't mind doing. Here's a little angle brush. And I'll just take some, just mixing white like this. Just come in here. Try the mixing white first. The transparent white, if it's, uh, if it's not showing up, you can always um, go to, this is titanium now. You can see, you can start adding a few little lines. Don't get them way back here. Keep them at least, uh, you know, half an inch forward. You want, if you've got any surf gumming, it's going to be right up here in front. Now what happens is I put it on one side of the brush like this. Let me, sh can I show you right here? And then I bend the brush, brush toward me. See, I'm kind of, kind of bending it, right? And then I, then I kind of wiggle it and I lay down this light line. Do you see how I'm doing that? So I'm going to do that now. Okay, you ready? I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to kind of wiggle it and lay down this light line, this surf line. See, like that? So you're kind of making a wave at the same time. I'm making a wave at the same time. This is sort of an interesting trick. Yeah, I'll do of... another one here like that. And then there's a little bit more. I'm kind of bending and leaning it. And I'm leaning a little tiny bit of water like that. See, and then you can come back behind it and just sort of um, skinny it up. But it leaves this sort of neat kind of little ridge almost. So if you wanted just a kind of a clever way to, say if you were trying to, you know, suggest, you know, some rock, you know, the surf's kind of out for them depending on where they're, um, you know, how deep the water is, where the surf is, but maybe there's just a little bit like that. Okay? So, and I don't have any sailboats or anything in there. We just kind of kept it, we've kept it pretty simple. The, the trick with this one, okay, the trick with this, um, this video, and I think what we're trying to do is just show you how to do this dirt road and how to be able to paint that in, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to rinse that brush now. I think this table gets so far away from me, or did I move her? I don't know, but this is really <laughs> far away now. This water bucket just got another foot away, Can, which I'm not sure how that happened. Do you want me to come over and move you over? No, I'm fine. I'm just here, but, you know, I'm just saying. I'm, I want to whine and complain. Come on. <laughs> What's gotcha. a video of that, Ginger? Fine. Is it, has it <laughs> lost something? Is it whining or complaining? Come on, you know. <laughs> Just that's true. How unfun is that? All right, so we're back over here to this palette. We can take a little bit of white and a little bit of burnt umber like that, okay? That's pretty much burnt umber and white. There's nothing too tricky about that, would you say? Now, what the, the trick is, is I'm going to come over here to my uh, um, paper towel, and I'm going to come right on top of this. Um, and I just see I'm just sort of dragging this flat of the brush here and I'm just saying that this is my road here and then I'm going to do the same thing here instead of going that way tap tap I'm going to go this way and just say that there's some this is the, my light dirt and I'm going to go across it this way okay and I'll leave the center kind of dark Do you see what I just did left the center a little dark now look how cool that made that road Wow, isn't that neat? And then I might come right across the very top where it's, I might just say it's very light right there. Now acrylics dry darker. We may have to do this a couple times, but you see I've already sort of put in my little dirt track, okay? Now, we know we've got, we, we've got back here, let's see, let's just draw that in. We've got back here somewhere, we've got, I sort of did something like this, made these sort of uh, cliffy things, right, like that. And then this was going to come, our road was going to come up here like this. And kind of like, that. we're doing something like that, okay? That makes sense? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that means I need a little tiny bit more blue. A uh, little ultramarine blue, a little tiny bit more blue. Just a little bit lower here, just to, for all practical purposes. We need a little bit more blue. Maybe another little bit of white here. Who knows? We can take it out if we don't like it later. Okay? So there's our there's our surf coming into the shore like that. Now, let's see. This brush goes in water. The big one. We're back to the little angle brush. And, uh, uh, okay. So we need a, we need a, here's the thing. Here's one of the things you want to avoid as a landscape artist. You don't want to, you don't want bright colors in the distance. 
the th rule is the farther things are away, the more muted. So you can't put a big yellow um, flower. Let's see, let's see if I can show you. Mm. Okay, so what you wouldn't do was put a big bright yellow house right here, okay? It's not, not the plant or house or flower. You want to mute the colors. And remember, we, we learned last night how to mute colors. So let's make a muted green. Let's take, um, we're going to start making an army green color. So the color we're going to use is uh, yellow, probably even yellow oxide because it already has red in it, and ultramarine blue. And we're going to probably about 75% ultramarine blue. We'll start with that. And if you need it more muted than that, you can add a tiny bit of burnt umber to it, and that will certainly turn it into more of an olive green. Now I'm going to come along here like this on my cliff, okay? And I'm just going to paint, paint this sort of interesting cliff in like that. Now the trick is here, you just don't want one solid color. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue here and tap, you know, just using up and down brush strokes, um, put a few little shadows in this, uh, in this green. There's already green on my brush, but I can get a bit more, see? So it's just not one color, okay? This is what I don't want is one color. Now, if I want that lighter somewhere, if I want to say that this, some of this is a little bit lighter, I can take some mixing white, okay, and I could add a little bit of green here on, on the edge somewhere, but I probably want to wait till this dried. In other words, I don't want to put any houses in here. I don't want to put any, um, you know, you could maybe, you know, add some dark, but let it dry if you have to. And just, you just say that there's something there, okay? There's our background. Okay. Gary, um, Sherry's asking a question. Do you prefer plain chalk over the white charcoal pencil? Well, here's the thing, Sherry. It was Cherry? Sherry? Sherry. 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 I like these uh, white charcoal pencils. I, I can't sharpen them. I don't have a sharpener that fits them, which is a pain. And John has to sharpen them with his <laughs> knife every once in a while. <laughs> Not that I couldn't get a knife and sharpen it with myself, but then you've got to find the waste basket. It's a mess. And then if you break it, then you've got to sharpen it some more. It's a thing, right? It's not like zzz sharpen. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So, for, so, you, and, so, so the bottom line, do you have a preference between them? Well, I like this because if I don't need a really, really, these little new pastels, you know, we had just ordered a bunch more. And the reason I like those is because if I don't need a really fine line, they're good enough. And they're very soft and they show up on everything and I can use them also for the back of paper to transfer images to. So they're handy, okay? All right, so now our next um, layer of, of green is going to be on here. So we're going to start with ultramarine blue this time and because um, we want a darker, a tiny bit of purple and maybe a little yellow oxide. We're going to make a really, really dark green. Now we're going to come along here like this and making kind of curved lines like this. We're going to follow along next to our road and we're going to darken this green right here like that okay and i'm just sort of going to ignore that for the minute but that just sort of gave me an idea where i was going and i'm going to take this green and i'm going to put it over here on this side of our road and then i'm going to take this green up in here like this and using little up and down brush strokes i'm going to put i'm going to start with some dark green right here so that's the beginning of my road, and I skip a space, and it's going to go up like that, okay? And let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, I want it kind of dark along here, just probably erase that line. So far easy? Yeah, everybody's with me? Okay, so um, in fact, I'm just going to erase that line. I'll just take some, probably the easiest way to erase it is just take some green and paint over this, right, like that, okay? So that's my, this is my lower thing, this is my upper thing. And, uh, and this is my road, and we've got a water. I mean, that is fairly fast, don't you think? Now, when you look at this right now, do you see how acrylics dry darker? My road is not as light as it could be, yes? You see that, and you see this? It's just not dark. That happens. You think you're just doing great, and you turn around and you look, and because acrylics are drying darker on you, you don't have your values, okay? In other words, the values meaning some things get too dark, sometimes they're all the same. So what we're going to stop and do now is um, uh, play a trivia question why I dry my... Yes, you are. 
People dry have been my, asking, where's the game? Where, where I dry my canvas. Now, here's the thing. For those of you who are new to the game, this is how to stump the artist, which these days doesn't seem to be very hard to do. <laughs> Most of you are much better at it this than me, but we all learn something. This is an art trivia game. I roll the dice. There's like six questions. I'm really not six loving category. the number six. I hope we get something besides six. Yeah, yeah if, we're if really you get a roll six, I'm, I'm going to say come I want on, a new rollover. Come over. on, <laughs> Nuh-uh. You saw it. Six. No, I don't. We can't see it, so do it again. Oh, you showed it to us. Well, I'm going to do it again. I hate six. <laughs> Let's do something else. Four. four. All right. Four. All right. That's a where. All right. Four. Okay, no, so wait, I'm going to drive wait, wait, this. Wait, 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 wait. Before you start that, yeah? I want to see if there's a question. Uh, oh, can you show us the palette? Do you have the palette cover you can show us one more time? Um, you've got it all. No. So we have some new people who are coming up. They're trying to figure out what the uh, palette is you're using. Okay, here's new people. Here's what you got to understand is that we use the same colors every time. Well, every no, the actual palette palette. The Soho palette. Oh, this one? Yeah, I can do that. I'm not touching anything. I'm curving it. See, last <laughs> night I ruined a, a, a 9 by 12 Soho. It, okay. The reason we use gray is because the white really is, plays havoc with the camera. These come in white and gray. The advantage of using gray is you can really see your colors better, okay? So, but, um, you, know, I, you know, for years I used white. We just happen to like the gray because it shows up on the, um, on, the, on the camera, and you can really see the colors. If I used a white palette, you can't see it. So, all right, we're going um, to just no, move everything. You. Yep, I'm muted. you. All right. You're muted. All right, we got a question. Why does the dark green blue... Dark green with blue, black. Now that could be the monitor. Just go with that. Okay, question. This is a where question. With which city is the Flemish painter Hans Memling associated? M-E-M-L-I-N-G. Hans Memling. Munich, Zurich, or... Burgess, B -ber Burgess, B R U G E S. And you're back. Okay, so what was the question? Oh, you have to guess without knowing the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's even hard. Okay, I love it. With which city is the Flemish painter Hans Memling, Memling associated? M E M L I N G? Munich, Zurich, or B R U B R U G E S? Burge. Remember Br Bruges? Bruges. Bruges. Remember? Didn't you see that marvelous movie in Bruges? Remember that? It was just no. hilarious. Yes, you did. It was hilarious about those two assassins that ended up in Bruges. And I remember this. How? I'm telling you what. That is the funniest movie I have seen in years. It won an Academy Award. It was hysterical. In Bruges, I think was the name of it. We're watching that, man. That is That puts you on the floor. That is so funny. Okay. Not that there's anything funny about assassins, but... You know, you know Hollywood, they can make it funny. All right, so I've got a, a post that's about uh, two and a half inches long, and it's coming over here about an inch and a quarter from the, which is about, um, about two and a half fingers from the edge here. I'm just going to eyeball it in, and it's coming down here. It's leaning a little bit. I'm going to just draw a straight line like that, and I'm going to say it's, that's that seem about right. I want it to be a little bit higher than the, horizon line like that, okay? And then I've got one next to it that's sort of wide out a little bit. It's a little bit further here. It's about an inch apart here. It's coming up here and it's sort of going this way like that. And then to show that we've got a hill, now these are straight up and down and they're very small like this and you just don't see it and they come on down like that. So that's one of the things too is that the things get smaller as they're away from you. And then this post here has a, um, a post coming up this way to it, too. There's a post like that, all right? So one of the things that people do that's one of the mistakes is they want to actually, um, where did that piece of paper go? They want to actually draw in their post. Come on, just do a straight line. It's, this isn't rocket science. You can draw, the, you know, then you can go over it and make it as wide as you want. If you draw, in a, you draw it in like that, then you're stuck with whatever that is. So, okay, so we're going to start with, in acrylics, you always start with your darkest color. You start with the farthest thing away and come forward, and your darkest color and go lighter, okay? So now we're going to just take some burnt umber, and if I want that really dark, I can take some ultramarine blue with it 
and burnt umber. And I'm going to paint over my chalk, which is a little bit like painting over sand. It's a disadvantage of chalk, okay? But pencil, for instance, if you draw something out on pencil, like um, you can't, it, it keeps bleeding through. It's one of those things that will keep bleeding through. So there's a fence. And then I'm going to I'll were, see him. Were, were you passing up on the question, or did you answer it? Well, you didn't give me the question. I asked I you, you the question. Oh, I did. You did tell me. That's right. I'm <laughs> having a senior moment here. Um, I think it's Bruges. Bruges. Well, we have the majority of people saying Bruges. And that is the correct answer. If you are correct, give yourself 1,000 points. And remember, as soon as you hit 10 million points, you are, get something. We don't know what yet, though. But keep track of your points. <laughs> All, All right. points expire at the end of the year. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going to go over this one like that. And I'm going to, because I've been picking up chalk, I have to rinse my brush off between each post because this is picking up chalk like you might pick up sand mop, mopping a floor. Okay, now we're going to keep going down here. Here's this one up like that. And you don't want to end one right on a line. Always go above a line. Never end. Never end a post right where you have another line crossing it, okay? That's just kind of a rule. Little land These are some little landscape tips, okay, like that. There's our little post. See, already we've got some real distance here, don't we? Now, I need it lighter, so I'm going to take some um, white and add it to my brown and maybe a little yellow oxide like that, make kind of this warm brown color. And I want to come to the right of this, left of this, my other right, used to say, and, and do a highlight. Okay. That's, that's known as the ginger right. That's the ginger right, okay. And um, I'm really not the one to be giving directions. I think what's cool is that when they invented GPS, they just stopped thousands and thousands of arguments in cars. The person that invented the GPS contributed to world peace, certainly in all households, while well, male and females argued about where they were. Cinnamon's dad, you know, my first husband, Cinnamon's dad used to say, he, you know, I was always the navigator. He was the driver. He felt like he was really the only one on the planet that should have been behind the wheel. All these other drivers were a mistake. A little bit more white on my brush. And so, you know, he was always had comments about whoever else was on the road besides him. And, um, for instance, Cinnamon's drivers, when he was teaching my daughter to drive, Cinnamon, um, some of you may know her as the archer, but he, the, his driving instructions was a th 101 ways not to drive like your mother. Now, your mother does this. I never want to see that. Now, your mother does this. You may have noticed her doing it. Never do that. Apparently, she said it could have been a Cosby episode. But anyway, so he, um, he, he always, uh, I was always relegated to the road, uh, the, to the role of navigator. And then he was uh, the driver. And not, not that I didn't drive sometimes, because I did. But if we were going somewhere and it was, uh, and any navigation was required, he was behind the wheel and I was um, navigating. Okay, well, the problem with that was that uh, sometimes he'd say, like, what does that sign say down the road, you know? And, I mean, I couldn't see the sign, and I had 20-20 vision. He had that kind of vision that, that the Army people like to use for sharpshooters because he could see that well. And so we'd have, what, what sign? That sign. I don't see a sign. And then, you know, we'd have an argument about that. I mean, who argues about signs? But he, he managed to argue about signs. Or we'd argue about... Um, you know, I'd say, well, turn here. You should have told me sooner. And you, the GPS just takes all of that out, doesn't it? I mean, you have to think about that. Well, a couple of people are making comments that it hasn't re removed all arguments from the driving experience. Really? No kidding. Because sometimes the GPS is wrong. Oh, okay. I personally use Google, and I have not had a problem. Yeah, and then, you know, the thing about John is, is that um, John is a very relaxed person. If we were to end up in Timbuktu, he'd just see what was in Timbuktu and get going. He wouldn't just huff and puff about it. You know what I mean? It's the huffing and puffing that's, that's annoying, right? <laughs> Don't you think so? It's the huffing yeah, and puffing. Yeah, I think so. Here's some more of this light brown, right? And I'm dry brushing this on the road again. I'm leaving some of this darker under color. Now I'm barely touching it, kind of just wiping most of it off and just kind of keeping my brush real flat like this and just sort of doing this, okay? Just laying it on there again, very thin like that. As long as we're, you know, doing that. Okay, that brush goes back in water, so I start lighting up the road again. Now we're putting in the um, other fence post, and let's see. I think I, I know I put um, here's. I think we're doing pretty well. So we've got these fence posts, and it's crossing here, right? 
So I think we're, we're good here. Um, let's see, where's my, looking for the burnt umber. I put all the colors out so I'd have them. Boy, the whole, oh, I see the it. The whole earth shook that time. What did I cook? What did I hit? You hit something because the whole, everything vibrated. You must be hitting. I hit the camera, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't ever I remember you thinking there was an earthquake. Wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't used to be there, you know. Well, it's just this is new. You know, it takes me a while to get used to things. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's not just. I hey, it's better. I mean, we've had a clean feed all he's, night. He, you know what he did tonight? We went out to we went out to eat, and we're lining up the water glasses, and I was getting the lemons to put in them, and I'm looking down. I put the lemon in the first glass, and I'm looking at it to put it in the far <laughs> glass, and I'm looking, and I guess I'm not looking at the glass because. You know, my mind understands this movement, and I looked and I put two lem lemons in the same glass because he'd move the glasses. I mean, I was I just swapped it to make it closer for you. Apparently so. You know, <laughs> just uh, so weird. I mean, I'm sorry. All right, so let's get a little bit of purple on that, a little bit of red. We want this dark here. Here's our dark post like this. This has to be straight across like that, coming down at an angle. There's our dark post. It's not real big, but there you go, dark post. Now that has to dry and then we're going to see, do we need any more of this dark on here like this edge? That was a pretty good dark color. Okay, so while, we're, while that's drying, okay, very good. That, while that's drying, I want to see if I need anything else. Maybe I'll take a little bit of yellow now and go back into that green I had and um, take a tiny bit of CAD, kind of yellow oxide with it, tap off the brush. That's the trick. Put it on both sides of your brush, tap it off. Now I'm going to come up here a little bit and lighten up a little bit of this green. Because remember what's happened, my acrylics have dried darker. So where this post is, and like for instance back in here like this, I'll just dry this a bit, put a little bit more of this lighter color somewhere. Like particularly it's going to be on, it's going to be on the dark side like that. So let's take a little mixing white now and, and lighten it up a couple of more places. Wipe the brush off. This is, it's still muted, but you can go lighter, you just can't go brighter, okay? All right, so there you go, like that. So we've sort of given that a, a nice uh, feel to it. And let's see, I think I want a little darker something right in here. If you kind of suggest a cliff by adding a few little dark shadows back in there. All right, so now let's lighten up this, this um, post right here. I didn't think it was dry enough, we can touch it. I didn't want to have to just dry everything. Here's a little bit of white paint. I want to leave the bottom edge um, dark like that. There you go. So there's my post. Okay, so moving on. This is, this is a lot easier than you thought, isn't it? It is so far. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to put these puddles in. Okay, so we want to put these puddles in. Now the trick is uh, don't put your painting pictures in the wet paint. That'd be a trick. Okay, so I'm going to take some of that sky color we made and I'll come down here like this and just, I'm going to put it down on this part of the hill. If you, This is going uphill, so you don't want to put it up there. And I'm just going to suggest that there's a puddle here. That's that sky color. And I'm going to put one here too, a little puddle right here and maybe one here before the hill starts to go up. Alright, and make it kind of, keep it kind of zigzaggy like that. So that we're going to say those are our puddles. And let's see, do we have any of that gray color? Here's that, here, is it any of that lighter gray color? Here, let's put a little light color here, a little bit of white in here like that. Okay, like that. Let's put a little bit of white. Now the outside edge of a puddle can be a little darker. You can say it's a, a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber. It can be a little darker here on the outside edge like this, you can, you can add that, okay. Same thing here, it can be a little bit darker. You know, maybe where the, you know where the, the, here's what's happened. The puddle's drying up, but the mud's still wet. You've seen that, right? So it's still a little bit darker here. Um, all right, so there's our mud puddles. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now, even later when, when you go on, if you go to our website, junicoglive.gallery this weekend, We've been telling you for our members, our members can go ahead and put the, put the kit in. I did that later this afternoon, and you can have this whole painting finished to this point. Kid goes in really nicely. All right, so let's, let's add some of this lighter grass now, okay? So I've, I've got this dark brown on my um, brush. I'm coming over here. You can see my palette now. 
haven't taken that off, a little bit of just yellow and in green here. And I want to come up here on the side of the road. Now one of the things here is we're going to tap in, just tap in, leave some of that dark color, just tap in this light, lighter green here like this, okay, at the edge. Remember things get smaller and, and your brush strokes should sure to be up and down like this. And we're just going to kind of, uh, uh, so our lighter green. Now we want to take a little bit of cad red medium, make a different green, just add a different color. And so it's not all one color. You see how I've got almost a gold color sort of tapped in there too. Up here like that, it's going to come up a little higher here. We're going to say here's some of our darker colors, some gold, and then we're going to switch it back. Uh, really, we only have to go that far before we start to do long grass. But already that's kind of cool. And then we can take the same thing over here. We can go up here like this and suggest that there's some grass growing this way, um, kind of on the side of the road. Let's make a little bit darker, darker color by adding just a little bit darker green in places. Vary the green. In other words, layer it like shingles on a roof. You can, if you, since you know that yellow and blue make green, sometimes all you have to do to vary the green is to just add another color and then add a color next to it, like this. And we're going to say that here's some uh, grass right here. So there's a side of the road. We're not saying much about that, okay? And we'll come back with some lighter grass in a little bit. Okay, so, so far so good. Now let's do the same thing here. Let's just come on up here to the center of the road, leave some of that dark edge and just imply that this grass is growing in the middle, okay? Then we'll skip a space, leave a little bit of the dark, and then come in this way and just say that there's some grass growing that way, coming toward us like this. Gets a little wider down toward the bottom. So you're, the bottom of your road should be at least um, eight inches wide down here, okay? So I'm pretty sure that's what it is here too, about eight inches. Um, yeah, it's a little, it's eight inches with some grass, you know, falling over it. So that's pretty close. Okay, so now um, I want to, I want to get a little gold. Now this is the trick. Take a little bit of yellow oxide, which is a gold color, and tap some there. Tap some here while it's still wet. Just right along here, just going to tap like this. You don't have to, in other words, when you're painting stuff like that, you can suggest gr something like grass. Now. Here's the thing, can you get it here because this is still pretty wet, is it going to mix too much? If I did a little bit of gold, I could put a little yellow oxide with it. If I wanted some lighter gold right here like this, just using my little angle brush, right? And maybe I want some grass coming over this way, and I might take some lighter gold, kind of gold and mixing white. And it, it might be better to dry it, but I think we're getting away with it right here. I'm going to suggest that there may be some grass kind of coming out like that. And now we'll take some phthalo blue and yellow and white. Now we've got a, a warm, this is a very warm green. Add a little yellow oxide to it. Now we're going to say that there's this, a, you can warm up the grass as you come forward. It, you wouldn't want to put this bright color back there, but you can do that here. You can have a little bit of this color here as we come forward and suggest that there's some grass coming up this way. Then, as I come up to the back fence, I have to lighten this board before I get too far away with the grass. Okay, so let's just stop for a second, get a different brush, lighten up that board. A little bit of a, how about um, some yellow and cad red medium, make an orange color, and add a tiny bit of purple to that and gray it. Okay, not too much. You saw what happened there. Okay, let's just, that's an interesting gold color. What can we do with that? Um, not much. All right. So what you do is you don't try to fix this. If it's a color you don't want, just leave it alone. Just walk away. Walk away. All right. It's not the color I want, so I'm going to walk away. And I want a, more of a gray color, so I'm going to take ultramarine blue and cad red and white. And I want a gray color and maybe um, a tiny bit of brown with it. I want a gray color, more white, titanium white, okay? Now I'm going to come up here like this and lighten up this board right here like that one more time. Lighten that up, okay? 
All right, now that I've done that, put that brush away, I'm going to come back over here with the um, start some grass. Here, pinch your brush like this. This is your, this is your, your angle brush. Pinch it, put paint on one side, come on up like this, and start painting in some grasses growing that way. Now, a little bit of mixing white, a little bit of gold. The grass gets shorter as it goes farther away. You want to have big, tall grass strokes. That's one of the things people do is that all the brush strokes, everything gets shorter and you know less bright and grayer as it goes back. So I can, I can create the effect of distance, atmosphere and distance, by the length of my brush strokes. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here around this post like this, and I'm going to create some nice grass up here like that. See, and that pushed that landscape way in the background. All right, so what you have to do, though, is you've got to vary the color of your grass, just like we did on the road here. So if I've got that light here, then I want another dark section. Let's see, let's put a little purple with that. I want another dark section right here, okay, like that, some dark. And then I would want light. I'm just, I'll start varying the colors so that my next uh, section maybe is more of a, uh, a gold color. Now, if you're using an angle brush, the long end is towards you, and you lift up. Lift up, and don't have them all going in the same direction. I think anybody that's ever done any gardening or weed eating probably will find this pretty easy because the grass doesn't all go in the same direction. And now, at some point, we need some grass falling over the road like that. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going for now is a little bit of uh, some grass growing this way. Maybe some lighter coming up here. Let's come back with some darker grass up in this direction. Let's see, try a little phthalo blue. That'll make it a brighter, darker green, a little red in it. This is a good way to learn how to make greens because we're brightening up this green now. I can take a little white with that. Now watch what happens when I add a little bit of white kind of add a little bit of blue-green grass up here like that. That kind of changes the color, brightens it up a bit. Come back up here with the gold like that. There you go. Okay, now, now we're starting to shorten them up here, and it's got to come over the road. Now, at some point, we're going to throw some flowers in there, but even if we didn't, that's not bad, okay? And then we know that it's kind of the, the grass is kind of dry and lighter up by the fence. So a little bit of white and, and yellow oxide, which, which is my kind of gold color. Let's try titanium, because the mixing white wasn't doing anything. Here, let's try a little titanium, some little lighter grass up in here, like that. OK. There you go. All right, so now let's do the same thing here. Let's come up here. Now, there's this, for the most part, this front grass is, sh is small. But you can start here off the edge and suggest that there is some grass growing in this front edge when you cross the road like that. Then come up with your yellow, your gold color. Just do something like that and suggest. You don't have it going all the way down here, though. See, it's just in the very front of it, OK? Now, one of the things you can do, too, is like on the side of the road here where that puddle is, you can add, let's see, let's make that more of a, an army green. Like that, you can sit, so might there might be a reflection of the grass in the puddle, like that over there. Um, so far, so, I mean, it's sort of it's interesting how quickly this comes together, isn't it? Okay, so in order to do flowers now, we talked about this last night. We've got all greens, and a lot of our flowers are red, so that's not going to work. But what we can do is take some purple and ultramarine blue. You still see my cam, right? You still my, my, the, the palette, right, John? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just suggest that we've got some purple flowers here. And in order to do that, let's switch brushes. I need some lighter green ones here. So here's some yellow, bright green. That's the green I told you not to use, right? Now, we're going to put a little tiny bit of red in it and tone it down. Look at red medium, and that'll... Still can have a light green, but it's got a tiny bit of cad red medium in it. And I'm going to just come up here like this, and I'm going to tap in some kind of lighter green flowers like this coming up here like that. 
maybe something over here and stop, okay? Maybe I'll put just a couple here like that. Just tap in something like that with the corner of the brush. Okay, and let's see, where else will I do it? Let's take a little yellow oxide, and I might tap in a few little yellow oxide flowers. I can get away with that because, they're again, we're dealing with greens now, okay? And if I wanted to say that there were some little yellow flowers growing up the road, if I wanted to say that, which I happen to, I would take a smaller brush and start with a little bit of yellow oxide and just do a few dots like this. You, the flowers get smaller as you go back, even on the road here, okay? And then I might take a little tiny bit of yellow and mixing white, yellow oxide. You can have a few bright flowers, just don't get crazy and make them real small. I'm going to say that there's a few of these little bright, here's even some pure yellow maybe. Here, just like one, two, stop. One, two, stop. Don't, don't go nuts on me. Well, what's the yellow you've been using? This is just cad yellow medium, okay? Okay. And I'm going to say that there's some brighter yellow flowers up here like that. I'm going to tap a few in here, and they can be bigger as they come forward. I can have brighter flowers as I come forward, and I'm, I can even add some yellow and, and see, I can brighten up a few, okay? Like that. And um, even in here, I could have just a couple, but not, not too crazy. All right, now, I want some orange flowers. Can I get away with that? Yeah, we're still in the green, so um, I'm going to do a few little orange flowers. If I'm careful, what we mean by that, I mean you put a dot and you pick it up and you put a dot. You're not mixing now, you're just dot dotting, okay? I'm going to put a few little orange flowers in here. I'm going to dot around here and add some of those. Again, they get smaller as they go back. That's your bristle on number one That's round, right? That's a bristle on number one, yeah, you know, bright brush. Okay. Right or round? This is, I, you, it's not really a round. It's a, is it a round? It's a round. That's no, always a round. It's a round, number one round. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. That's what it is. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to come up here like that and say I've got a few of these. Now, they're over wet green, so they're sort of uh, suffering a bit. All right, so now I want, while that's drying, so I don't have to, here, let's put this brush in water. While that's, let's do it like that. While this, is, while this is drying, okay, both those brushes can sit there like that. I want to put some bob wire, okay? So what I want to do is I want it kind of loose and baggy like this. So I'm going to kind of make a loop like that. This is the pencil now because that, that chalk would be too hard to draw over. and kind Because if you didn't like it, you could wipe it off, okay, like that. And I'm going to say that there's another kind of saggy wire here kind of down like that. And then this wire here is just going to come off the canvas like this and then maybe another one that's going to come across this um, kind of lead your eye back. So in order to create that, what we want is some uh, burnt sienna. We haven't put any burnt sienna out. We have burnt umber. I'm going to put a little burnt sienna out. Assuming I can get the cap off. Here we go. A little burnt sienna, not too much. Now, you want to wet your brush, pull it to a point. Any questions why I'm doing all this? I'm doing a lot of talking because there's just so much to tell you in a very short period of time, right? Well, that's kind of what I figured. So I'm going to just take a little bit of that burnt sienna. Don't do this if you can't make a really tiny line, okay? Just leave it out. But you can go right here like this, and you just go a little bit at a time. You don't try to do the full line. Just do about an eighth of an inch at a time. And just starting with the burnt sienna, like this. Almost like little dashes. Like little dashes, because bob wire, we talked about this before, is um, a bob wire is, uh, you, there's like all these different kinds of bob wire, depending where you are in the world. There's a museum for bob wire. And so if your bob wire is a little different than somebody else's, that's all right, okay? See, now we're going to come around here. Here's the little one. And I'm not going to keep going with it. I just do the two strands to about there. Now, in order for this to show up, I need some yellow. So now here's the trick. In order for that to show up, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of yellow on top of that. And it's just the teeniest bit of yellow. Where, remember, wherever there's a dark, there's a light. And then I'm going to do a little, little tiny bit of orange. Too. A little bit of 
maybe a little orange, or either it's going to be orange or yellow or a combination of that. And you're going to see a little tiny bit of that wire like that. Then you've got like a little V. It's like, um, it's like, uh, let me just show you real quick. It's like if this is your, your wire coming like this, every once in a while, Bob Wire, for those of you who've never had the pleasure of getting your pants <laughs> caught in it, it's like little V's off of it, or almost like a little, it's not really an X, but it's, there's like, they've got these little hooks which are little, what they are is a little piece of wire that twists like that where the wire goes through, okay? And sometimes they're going this way. Does it make sense? That's what you're drawing. So you're just, you're, you don't make these too big or it's going to be weird, but you're, they're just almost like little dashes. So that's the other part of the bob wire. Well, it helps to know what you're painting, right? So anyway, so you can put those in if you want, just a little dash of that on the... Little bar barbs, that's the word I'm looking for. Barb. Barbs. Barbs, okay. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of the cad red now and brighten up some of these flowers because this green has had a chance to dry a little bit. Okay. All right, so there's my bob wire, and I just, I don't feel like I've got it over the, right over the, I'm going to take a little purple now and pull it right over this, um, uh, this log like that. This is the, maybe it's looping around. I'm going to say it's looping around my uh, <laughs> post like that. Okay. So at this point, uh, what do we got? Well, at this point we need some dark green and we got to, we got to dry stuff. Do we to make sure that we've got some dark green coming in here like this? Okay, like that, kind of break that up. And so it's, it's all had a chance to dry, so now we can come back with this, this brush and make some bigger grasses like this. Maybe we need a little bit in here like that. A few little dark bits of grass. Okay, up in there. Uh, Gretchen's asking, do you ever do mixed media art, like what you drew, the barbed wire in darker with pastels and left it? Uh, no, but you know what you can do? Uh, a good friend of mine, um, his name was um, Bruce Eagle, and he worked for Disney for years, okay? And he drew, he invented Joe Camel. Um, well, you know, he created Joe Camel uh, for advertising. He did a lot of Cinderella and stuff. He worked for them for years. And... He was really, I mean, a much better artist than, than I'll ever be. Just phenomenal, okay? And really detailed. And when he would do, like, uh, pictures of, say, some guys sitting around a campfire with a wolf, he'd hire models and put them in clothes and everything and, uh, you know, outfits that we, of their time and get the dog and the whole thing, right, and take pictures. And his, I mean, his stuff was so perfect. It was almost photographic. It was really, really good, okay? And... And he was using acrylics, not oils, which is interesting. And so he was getting such good, he was doing so well on the faces. And they were huge pictures, too, like the one behind me. And so I said to him, I said, Bruce, what are you doing? And he wouldn't tell me. I'm telling you what, it took me six months to get him to share with me what he was doing. And somebody else wrote me last night about the tips and said, I think it's so generous that you should share things. I don't tell you anything I do. I, mean, you can, I want you to be successful. Of course I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I mean, we're not, none of us, we're all painting this, we're all going to paint something different. You know what I mean? Um, it's okay. And what, so what Bruce did was he used something called um, uh, Bistine, which is a rubber cement cleaner, okay? And he used uh, the really good colored pencils. What, 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 what's the brand of the really good colored pencils? You know what I'm Prism? talking about? Prisma colors. And he would do the faces of his people on his acrylic painting in Prismacolors. Now, is that mixed media? I don't know. But he would have no problem doing that at all. And then he would still be able to um, varnish he, over it? Yeah, he varnished over it. And you couldn't tell. Huh. But, I mean, that took six months to get the, the trick out. And I'm sorry, Bruce, I'm telling the whole planet. Because <laughs> I think everybody should know that. Why should that just be a Disney secret? I'm telling you. That's what he did. I never promised I wouldn't tell. I finally just convinced him that hoarding that information till he died was dumb. You know, um, <laughs> stupid. That's good to know. Anyway, great question. Wasn't that a good question? I want a little tiny bit of light on this bob wire here. 
a little bit right there. I think I want yellow though. All right, I gotta dry something, John. Just give me a second. I gotta dry something. Oh. All right. Did you have anybody you can show? We got some great artists. Well, I know, come but through. I didn't get a chance to load up anything. He didn't load anything. Oh, well, tell him about the puzzles or something. Okay, I could tell them, but you have them. Well. <laughs> Why don't you hold a puzzle out there? Why don't you just take a breather? Take yeah. a breather. Tell us about these puzzles, Ginger. Okay. I oh, this is drying. All right. Well, this is drying. I want to tell you about my puzzles. All right. Some years ago, a, a publisher from Canada came to me and said, we'd like to use your artwork for puzzles, which was excited to me. They, you know, we, there were some negotiations over the price, but they had no idea what I would have do it for free. I was just so excited to have puzzles, okay? And because I really like puzzles. And so they gave me some samples, and the puzzles have since come and gone. They're out of print. They've sold them in Walmart and Target. We now have... Uh, eight samples of what they gave me on our website and under, in an auction, testing out our new auction software. If you haven't had a ch chance to see this, there's eight different ones, and which I think is really, really cool. There's, a, 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 uh, there's one there, too, eight different ones, okay? So uh, you, can look, you can look at our website, gingercooklive.gallery. My favorite one, got to tell you, the very favorite one I've got, is this one. We've said it before, but I think it's so cool. This was, uh, there's this Norman Rockwell's painting. It's called the Artist Five Collection, and here's mine. They put me right next to Norman Rockwell, which is probably one of the, you know, it was better than being on, on QVC. All, one year I was on QVC all day long with my tapestries and pillows and throws. All day long it was a full ginger cook thing, and yet um, this was more exciting to me, to me next to Norman Rockwell. <laughs> so anyway, got to tell you that they're on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. And for those of you who want to take a piece of the magic home with you, you know, you want a little piece of the ginger magic, these are called Original Ginger Cook Imagination Claws. These are the actual claws that I use to uh, wipe my brushes on. I would wash them a bunch of times, kind of got past the recycling point. So if you'd like one of these, we, um, we've got these. We have, I think we have eight. And I think eight, two of six. them have not been bid on. No, everything's been bid on. Everything's been bid on at least yeah. once. But anyway, the auction is uh, is the I last. I got the dates on that. Hey, John has the last dates of the auction, so oh, we'll tell you that. Okay, that. so that was a good idea, John. This is dried enough. We'll just finish up with the flowers. See, I like the bob wire, don't you? And I'm going to come. I think I got the bob wire a little fat right here, so I'm going to come back with some green. <gasps> right, so I'm going to mix mix that green color and just sort of skinny it up. It was a little bright there. Okay. Let me just get a little dark green color here. There we go. Just a little bit. That, that had to skinny up my bob wire. All right, I started to do this purple, which was white and, um, and purple, and a tiny bit of ultramarine blue, and I wanted to make these sort of pretty purple flowers. So um, this is dry. We start with the darkest color, and we're just going to start with some dark purple and just tap up some sort of little purple flowers like this. And you know, you could put any wildflowers you need. You could actually Google wildflowers and get a little more authentic than I like to make up flowers. <laughs> just do. So I mean, you're more than welcome to just Google some wildflowers, put those in, you know, kind of personalize this picture. That's one way you can do it, okay? And uh, we're gonna come along here and just put, they get smaller as they go back. That's one of the tricks that you wanna appreciate is they get a little smaller as they go back like that. So here's some purple ones. Um, I might put a couple purple ones in here, but they're going to be smaller. Just tap them in the, in the road, okay, like that. And then I'll put, take a little titanium white, and just on one side of them, which would probably be the left side, I'll tap a few little light dots like that. So right in there with a the little brush like that, dot, 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 okay, like this. Kind of overlap them to suggest that some of these are lighter than others. And then let's take a little phthalo blue and white and make one that's a little bit different. Let's just say this one up here is uh, thalo blue and white. Oops, let's mix that color a little more. Here, let's say, because I like, you know, you know how pretty turquoise is next to orange. So we're just going to trick the eye a little bit with that. And make, let's put a little bit of a lighter color on these. See, because otherwise they'll just disappear right into the, um, the, the picture. They're just going to disappear. All right, so we've got some pretty flowers there. Let's start putting in some yellow now. We can add a few more bright yellow ones. Tap some brighter yellow ones back over here like that. And let's just, just a few. You just, you don't need very many. Just tap and stop and look, see? Um, you got some bright ones coming up there. 
And as you go back, they get smaller. So maybe back here, you're just almost rubbing the, the um, just lightening this up like this will indicate there's some flowers there. And the same thing here in the middle, like that, if you just put a little light like that. And then let's take a little bit of that orange color, which we made, which was cad yellow medium and cad red medium. And let's put a few little gold um, strands of grass coming this way. And maybe over here, put a little water on the brush that so wants to flow. Okay, like that. Notice where I'm holding this because I'm, I'm leaning over it. I'm just really close to it. Now, if that grass is too, too thick, where are come you? back with a little. I'm down here, right here in the corner. Oh. That grass is too thick. I'm coming down here. I'm jumping all over with some nice, um, uh, you know, puddle colors. Okay. Now I want to put a little bit of the. I want to suggest that uh, there's some lighter grass falling over the road like that. I'm going to just have some, you know. Now you're just going to add some more colors like that. Let's get a little bit of some orange kind of bronze grass coming this way too, like that. And how about a little tiny bit of kind of a grayed green is in the puddle, or maybe there's a reflection like that. Might be reflecting it. And then how about some lighter gray from the sky in our puddle here. Let's come back here now. Let me rinse that brush off because I've had green on it. You'll see what we're painting. I'll take some of that white and some of my sky color Okay, because remember the puddle is actually a mirror of the sky, and I, that's not light enough. So let me get some titanium white on the brush, mix it again right here. There we go, like that. I'm going to just do a few dots of white right like that, lighten that puddle up, and darken the edges. Remember, I said that one side I wanted the edges to be a bit darker. Okay, like that. There you go. So okay, so where are we? Where are we with our with our plants? I think um, I think we're really close to this. I want to just change the contour of my back um, landmass there and add some brown to the green because that was too bright. So you see, I'm coming back up here and changing the green color again because that that was way too bright a green. Bring that bring that up a bit. Okay, going to do that. Now we're still now what we're doing. Now you're looking at everything and saying, wherever wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So what can I do? Where can I lighten something up? And where can I darken something? So now I think I need some more light colors in here like this, maybe up here by this post, and maybe even along back here, some light colors. And maybe I need some I'm going to wet the brush cuz remember I told you you're you rinse the brush completely once in a while because your paint's drying in the brush too. So we're going to just come over here like that with this pointed brush and add some grass strokes going like that. Those are a little bit wider than I like. Then I'll take some green and skinny them up. Darker green like that. Okay. And here, let's just pull, let's pull some grass up like this. Pull something up here like this, and later if you go on to put the dog in, you may change some of this, but this is all right for now. I think we've got this pretty much light back up here next to our fence post. And how are we on the top of this? Um, I want to come up to the top of this and bring this grass up a little higher. Um, now here's where my water mister. At this point, are you guys doing this just kind of misting your paint? Because it's drying out enough where I'm not getting the flow anymore that I want. So I'll just start again, maybe put a little tiny puddle somewhere where I've got a little tiny bit of water on the brush, particularly when you're trying to do very delicate, you know, kind of long, thin, thin, um, thin brush strokes. There we go, like that. See, I wanted these a little bit lighter up here like that. That's a little bit wanted that little golder, okay, like this, and that's way too bright, so, okay, so we've dried everything, or hopefully, normally we would have dried everything, let's take that off, now this is real important to be able to do, be able to erase, and that's why you have to dry and save in, you just can't kind of go ahead and say, well, I hope it's dry, 
you, you take a moment and dry it for a reason, okay? Because if you need to change it, then you can, okay? So I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna uh, to that brown, that grass color. I want that in some darker, you know, kind of more of some brown stuff right here, okay? And how about some darker patches of grass back in here, like that? There we go. And let's go one bit lighter. So, all right, so can I answer any quick questions while we're just finishing up the grass here? Um, As you can see, I can just need to lighten up a few things. Let me just change that brush. It's not thin enough. It's not tiny enough. So it's not doing me any good. So I need a, I'd rather have one of these angle brushes. I want you to see how tiny of angle I can get with an angle brush as opposed to a pointy brush. Just look at the difference. I want you to see the difference I can get. Okay, question, John? Uh, no, like but that. I do want to give the dates of when the auctions are ending. Yeah, when, are, when is the auction ending? It's the end of the month, right? The uh, Imagination Cloth will be ending at midnight on the 26th, and the puzzles will end on midnight of the 30th. Okay. They're separated by a week. All right. So I want to head over there. The cloth will be ending, I guess, this weekend. It was Sunday. I thought so. I thought that it was ending this weekend. Yeah, I thought they were ending really soon. That's why I wanted to tell everybody about it. All right, so I'm bringing in some, some uh, brighter grass in the front. Remember, your brighter colors are in the front. And you're just coming off like that on the road like that, bringing some brighter colors. And I want to bring some brighter golds in here like that, a little bit of brighter, bigger flowers in the front like this. So that this is our center of interest right here. That's our center of interest. So we're... We're going to kind of play that up a bit. Um, okay. Kathy was asking, would the palette wetting spray keep the paints wetter longer than just plain water? Have you seen that from Liquid Tech? I have. and You, you know, have some in there. It's been in there for I bought years. some for years ago. What I found with that stuff is that the, it clogged. You got about mm. four sprays and the stupid thing clogged. Have you ever had that happen? Well, yeah, apparently Cinnamon Sim said hers, hers always clogs, too, according it to It clogs. So just I have no use for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, every once in a while, I'm just hopeful that they fix that, but they didn't. So guess what? It's, it's, you know, I mean, I'm, all right. So now, you remember I told you acrylics dry darker. So now I'm just touching up a few things to bring our path back, okay? I don't really like that. Don't you like this? Don't you think this came out just cool? I want to say here's a little bit of the dark puddle right here like that. Okay, and the same thing here. Here's a puddle like that, Okay. And there's our, there's our picture. And I think if you weren't going to, now here's, here, I want to show you this. So really, I want to invite you. One of the things is you can join our, you know, for $9.95. You've got a whole week of Ginger Cook Live, over 300 lessons on gingercooklive.gallery. We add new ones every week, and we'll add something new this week besides this one. But as a bonus lesson for our members, we're going to show you how I ended up uh, with a traceable and everything, putting this little girl in the picture with her dog, Okay. You could have her any colored hair. She'd be blonde or brunette or give her a ponytail. She could be anybody's grandkid, okay? And we got a basket of flowers and everything. I want you to kind of see. I mean, I think this painting is very pretty without the kid, but you might like it with the kid. And if you did, we invite you to come over to our website and, um, you know, have, have, try a week on us and see if you like it. I think it wouldn't just be this. We'll have this available Saturday or sooner. It's about... Probably, we think it's about 45 minutes to, you know, trace her on and because uh, you're just going to trace her on and then paint her in. you see how I did it, okay? So if anybody wants to do that, we thought you might like to do that. That might be fun. And uh, let's see, what else was I going to show you? Oh, yeah. Um, if you guys like stuff with hills, one of the videos that we did on YouTube this winter was this one. Doesn't it look very similar? With the hill, sort of, you know, again, different way with the birds coming up over the hill. And the fence is a little smaller this time. What if you went back, okay, now track with me, you guys. What if you went back, found this video, okay? Yeah. And what if you were to change it into a summer scene and do it with similar colors? See, if you, what you learned from this, could you turn this into a summer scene and set it back and have this be the water back here? Oh, I bet you could. I bet you could, and have some flowers going on here in the road. I showed you all how to do it, right? Mm. So just a thought, the thought that might be fun, might make a fun pair. I thought that might be really fun, uh, different roads to the ocean, you know, kind of thing. So anyway, this was our, I think this was really fun. Do we have any other great questions, John, before uh, we say goodnight? What are goodnight? new pastels? 
What? What are new pastels? New pastels are these, they're about a dollar and 13 cents and they're square little soft chalks. And they come in, um, well, they come, they're about, about that long when they're new. And they laugh. And I, and I always buy like light gray and light tan and stuff. And I just have them for sketching on stuff. I've got brown too. I've got, I've got a few little different colors. Here's yellow. These are all little stumps now. But they come, you know, here was a light green one. Okay. That's, and, they're, and they're just, that they're called NU Pastels. NU and, Pastels. Yeah. And I mean, I really like them for that. Okay. I mean, I think that they're kind of, I mean, I really, really do like them for uh, that. And let's see, do I want to do anything else to my water? I'm just looking at there in my ocean. This is the time when you're all done, right? Would you want to put some, you know, a little bit of gray out here in the ocean or a little bit of uh, white and um, ultramarine blue? Let's try a little mixing white. Let's try a little white here. I'm just saying, you know, you can always come back and add a little bit to your water once you see something. Remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So if you need to add, if you need to come back and play with your water a bit, you could do that now. This would be a good time. Don't get too carried with the, away with your surf, please. The farther things are away, the surf gets smaller, too. That's the other, uh, you know, thing that artists have got to remember is you can't have big white things way back there. In fact, you barely want to see it. Just barely see it. Little tiny white caps back there if you saw anything, all right? That's all you would see. And I'm sort of paint this off like that. Finish painting that off the side. And I think I want to paint. I, this didn't show up for me. So here's some lighter grass coming up the side of the road. Every time I think I've got it light enough, it dries and then it's a little darker, which is annoying, but that's cr acrylics for you. So if you know it's going to happen, um, that's when you come back and you kind of, you know, lighten stuff up. You just have something growing here too, like that. Don't get too carried away, but you can kind of scribble something in here like that. Say that that's a little bit bright there. It's a little gold here. Okay, that's that's what we got, you guys. That's, that's what we picture. got, you guys. I think that that's our that's our picture for tonight. So I hope you you know had a little thought about things that do's and don'ts of landscapes. Do you want to mute the colors when you go back? Things get smaller. Um, you want to pick a center of interest so you can't, you can't, and if we'd put, like, for instance, a person here, our center of interest here, then it would be very confusing. I even tried, I went out and tried to sailboats and, um, out there to see what would happen, and it was very distracting from all this because you can get too much what we call visual noise. So I think this is a very peaceful, um, uh, pr pretty um, picture. And uh, let's see, I might come back with a little yellow and red and just pop up. Remember we talked about flowers needing a second coat? So you might just pop up a few reds, you know, a couple of reds, just a few red dots now. Don't get carried away, please. As they go farther back, they're nothing. But you could add a few a little more bright flowers if you wanted to make this a cheerful road to be traveling on. Um, Kimberly is asking if there's a scratch in the sky. We see a little white line right there. Is that? There is a scratch in the sky. Look at that. Hmm. Wow. Good thought. Now, how would we fix that? Well, you know what? We happen to have some of the color from the from the clouds. So we make a new cloud. So we because we didn't you know put it all there. It's a little cloud there. No more. What scratch? scratch? There's no scratch. Yeah, but you're right, there was a scratch. I probably either did it with a ro ro ruler or something. Yeah, probably is. Then, you know, again, part of me says, oh, that's a neat cloud. You know what I really like? I'd like this cloud to be. No, <laughs> see, now you started that. You started that because then I'm thinking, what, nice if, going. This, what if this cloud were lighter? Kimberly, I mean, the part of me, part of me says, what if, this, what if this cloud were lighter? Here's a dry brush, and I'm just going to blend that in. What if that had a little lighter edge to it, kind of like that, right? That's kind of nice. Said, That's kind of nice. And then what if this edge were a little lighter, right, like that? Just saying, you know. So is a painting ever really done? Well, no. it should be. You got, But it doesn't hurt to just walk away from it for a day, right? And even here, a little bit lighter right here, just a couple of touches right in the puddle, right like that, one touch. See, it doesn't, see what that did? It doesn't hurt to just walk away from it for an hour or two. Let everything dry, see what happens. Like, for instance, these flowers right here, remember they went on top of wet green? What happened to them? What happened to them? They soaked into that wet green. Do you see any yellow flowers, orangey yellow flowers there anymore? No, right here, you don't see those. 
So, you know, and again, we talked about red needing a couple coats. There, so there's another little bright, cute red flower right there. But, you know, those are the kinds of things you got to kind of watch for. And then if I'm saying that happened there, sorry, if that post happened there, then this probably would have a little bit of a darker shadow right under, under right there. Those are the kind of things you look for when you're very, when you're all done, what can you do? What can I add or what can I take away and not ruin the effect? A couple more questions for you. Yeah. Um, Wanda wanted to know, do you, what, what are gauche, gauche paints? Um, gauche paints are, um, they originally, well, you can look them up on the internet. I would say that would be the best paint because there's acrylic gauche and, and stuff. And, and they're a, um, opaque kind of watercolor. It's a very they're, intent, They were designed for watercolor and for different stuff. You know, so look them up. I don't use them. They're different. They're not, uh, even acrylic gauche, they're very flat, very flat, um, very dull. They're, they're for different applications. They're for um, different kinds of paintings than what we're doing. You know, yeah. That would be, I would just say the best thing to do is just look them up on the, you know, look them up under Wikipedia and see what they say, you know, what they say they are. That's like, again, I don't, I, I really don't, don't use them. And I mean at all. And I'm, I'm, as I'm talking to you and we haven't quit, part of me wants to pull a little bit of dark under these grasses right here like that, see? Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. I needed some dark right there. And but, Mandy was wondering, do you varnish all of your paintings? Oh, you bet. In fact, here's the horse painting I showed you last night. Look, look what happened when we varnished it. Can you see it? Let me back out a little bit. You back out? Yeah, look at that. Look, look, at, look, that. look at the look colors at, Look at what thing. it did to the colors. It's, you want to take your photographs of it before you varnish, because you see how there can be a glare. But the varnish, what the varnish does is bring the colors out. And if I tilt it like that, you can kind of see it. See how it's bringing the colors out into that rock and then all these colors? Now this horse painting will be, this was just a sketch I did, um, and it's going to be a, like a 16 by 20 or larger painting that will be one of our weekly releases for our members probably in July. Because our members get a new release. It'll be sometime in the summer. Sometime in the summer. I don't even want it. Yeah, sometime <laughs> in the summer. We'll let everybody know and we'll show you when it's done. But that was the, the pre-sketch for that. But yes, I varnish everything eventually. You've got to varnish everything. I think we varnished this too. Remember, did you guys do, did we varnish this? No. No, not that one. We didn't the, varnish. Do you have anything one. we varnished? Yeah, this, if you haven't painted this, this was the three color challenge we did a couple Saturdays ago. Really fun to do. When you varnish something like this, I think we have a varnished one. I can show you the difference. Really good question. In the other room? Well, I do have, well, no, we were well, I do have, I want something that's before and after. I don't have a before and after. Well, you don't have another one of these that's varnished? I have to go down to the other end of the well, house. Well, how far is it? It's like down the hall, John. It's not like I asked you to go to it's Bangladesh. Here I go. <laughs> Just, go bye. Now. All right, I'm going to show you that because that's a really good question. What's the difference? You want to varnish them. I've got a really good video on varnishing. Uh, your paints because you can really do it wrong. Let me tell you what, you can ruin a painting in seconds varnishing it the wrong way and the directions on the bottle are wrong. How's that? They just tell you the wrong thing and nothing. The reason most people give up on varnishing their paintings is they do it totally incorrectly. It's not their fault. If you read the directions, you'd do what they said. You, most people would think directions would be accurate and they're just not. So thank you, John. He's coming back. I can show you the before and after of a varnished one. Okay, so it's the same painting. Now look, can, can you see the difference? But wait, I've got to now change the zooming factors. All right, so look at that. See that, see that you can see this one has been varnished with the coat and, and this one hasn't. And the, what happens is the colors pop out a bit more. It just, it just really, besides it protects your painting, all right? Really nice that when you varnish. And it makes such a difference. And you want to do two coats about an hour at least apart. So anyway, that's the example. These are, um, I think this was really fun, our, you know, our color challenge. And we had three colors, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, and white, and um, ultra, ultramarine blue. And look at all the different colors. Or no, it was phthalo blue, I think. All the different colors we were able to make, even in these two pictures. See the tones in different colors? Did it twice. So 
Anyway, that's the advantage of varnishing. We appreciate it very much. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We thank you very much. Have a creative day. Oh, yeah, one, just one more little quick question. Sure. Chills, Chills asked it a couple of times. Ginger, what size would the birds be if you want to add birds to tonight's lesson? Well, I think they'd be very much like that one I showed you, um, this one. Um, I think they'd be like about this size. Do you see the birds in this picture? It just depends how close you want to have them, I guess. Yeah, right? you know, I mean, if you put some up, they'd be, you know, they wouldn't be very big, but like little fingernail. Okay, you wouldn't, you, they wouldn't be, you, you've got to be kind of careful, and you'd be put careful where you put them. If you put, remember, this is the center of interest, so I'd probably be putting them up in this area. And the, and the farther birds are away, here's the thing I can show you. That's a great question. You know what? Where's our dong thing here? Where's that? That is a great question. Guess what? That is a super good question. What is the bird question? I liked it. Yeah. Whoa, what does that mean, Ginger? Um, you have just won a free week at Ginger Cook Live, uh, our Academy of Fine Art. And um, or? just to or one uh, free video downloadable lesson. Um, just uh, to use the contact us section. And congratulations on your question because it's a really good one. What size should the birds be? And I'm going to give you a fast example of things on birds. What was, what was her name that won it? Cheryl. Cheryl, congratulations. So if you are, you know, if you're already a member, then it's one free download. And if you're not a member, you can have a choice of it. One free downloadable lesson that you can keep and own forever or one week of over 300 lessons. And also you would, uh, if you just tell us when you want your week to start and, you know, you might want it when we uh, add the video with the kid and the dog too, just saying. All right, so I'm going to just show you here. All right, so here's, um, here's a hill like this. Here's a road, okay? So I've got a bird like that, okay, like this. But if this is my horizon line back here somewhere, right, the farther the bird is away, the smaller it is, okay? And the closer, the bigger. So if you're doing a, a, a flock of birds, you start with little ones. The, little, the farthest ones are small. And then the, and you kind of slant them a bit. And you can even give them a little bit of a body if you want the front ones, okay, like that. But that's the secret with the, with the birds, okay? So if I had a post here, which I do, and, you know, say a post here and like this, right? I mean, I don't think I would put a bird too close to the post because if it got too close to the post, you'd have to have some better detail. But you can kind of fool around with these a little bit, right? So if we got another hill coming here, for instance, let me just do that real quick. you got an, another hill coming down here like this, and this is our ocean, you know? If you... You know, you wouldn't put a bird right here because then you'd really have to draw that bird in, okay? He'd be a big bird. And I mean, you'd have to, you know, draw, I know, as a vulture or something eating, some, some carrion on the side of the road. But you can get away with the small birds. And remember, it's, it's you know, kind of almost like a, a, a it's not quite a letter V, but it's, it's very close on the side like that, okay? They're your birds. Okay, so the bigger they are, the closer they are. Does that make sense? Do you see how I just drew those birds and you believe these are bigger than those? And, that, and that's how you get birds. Great question. Congratulations on winning the question of the day. And we don't always do that, but we did it with you and we hope you guys had fun. Hey, hey listen, thanks very much. Your encouraging comments are appreciated. Uh, we have fun on this channel. Sometimes we're funnier than others, but we, our main goal is to make sure that uh, whatever we teach you is, is valuable information that you can really use. And, you know, likes are really appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, please do. And don't tell Bruce I told his secret about the pristine uh, rubber cement cleaner, which he used as a blending medium and a Q-tip and, um, and the... Uh, Colored yeah. pencils, which were Prismacolors. Prismacolors, yeah. Prismacolors, because that's like top secret just between us, right? Yeah, let's keep it real quiet. Thank you, Jennifer, for the donation. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Jennifer. That makes it possible for us to help others. Thank you very much, and we really appreciate it. All right, everyone. I think that wraps it up for the night. Say goodbye, Ginger. Hey, good night, you guys. Good night, John. Good night, Sammy. You. And there's Sammy with Chester, wishing you all a happy holiday. Apparently, they are up to. No good. Here we go. So you can see the before and after. Oh, no, they yeah. can't because the boys are on top of it. Oh, Let me move them off, off to the side here. There we okay. go. What, put it like this? Yeah, you can do that.
All right, I just wanted to show you guys that. I can move the palette too. I just thought you'd like to see if you want to. Put them on top of each other. Like that? No, um, one on top of the other. Like yeah, this? Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Let's yeah, just do it go. like that. Yeah, I just you can see the advantage. I think it's a perfectly nice painting if you didn't add it. I think the I think she's right. I think birds could be pretty. See? Could add a few birds. Or you can have a kid and the dog and the birds. Give me get it all. You could have it all. All right, everyone. We will see you next time. If you do subscribe, make sure you turn on the alarm because sometimes we do impromptu live sessions at the drop of a hat. Hey, we had a good stream. No buffering tonight, right? Uh, no buffering. And everybody says the quality was super duper. And we're doing 60 frames a second at 720 wow. HD. So we're, we, we are where we want to be, folks. Our investment was well worth it. Okay, well last, worth it. We really spent the big bucks to bring you the best quality video we could. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Night.